Let's talk about those icons. These are extensions you can add to your product. As you can see, there is more and more extensions and spoiler, you can expect even more with iOS 13. With extensions, your app is now everywhere, like everywhere. You directly enter the user's workflow and it allows you to remove a lot of friction. Extensions enrich the global iOS experience of your users. Each extension point has its own UX challenges, but there are some generalities. First, your extension must be independent. Your extension doesn't need the associated app to be running at the same time to provide its features. Also, you should make it recognizable. Since the user is out of your application, you should make him understand that the feature you provide through your extension is associated to your product. Also, be, context to be, be aware of your context. For instance, today widgets need to follow the same UX guidelines as Apple's one, so it feels more integrated and more native. You should see it not only as an extension of your application, but also as an extension of iOS. Now let's talk about the technical aspect. There is some limitations compared to an app, and it makes sense because your extension is not an application. When the user sees your extension, he is probably already using another application. So you are not allowed to use too much resources. So if your extension takes too long to launch, iOS will kill it. If your extension uses too much memory, your extension will be killed. And if you use too much CPU, guess what? Yes, your extension will be killed. So, basically, there is three different actors. There is your application, your extension, and the host app. The host app is the app that the user is currently using, and it's the app that triggers your extension. So basically, you can communicate directly from the host to your extension, you, and behind the scenes to make that happen, Apple uses inter-process communication. But there is no direct way to communicate between your extension and your application. You will want to share code effectively between your app and your extension, and to do so, the simple way is to use dynamic frameworks. Dynamic frameworks are great, they have a lot of advantages, but they are loaded at runtime. So they can slow down your app and your extension startup time. So if you have many frameworks, you should consider using static frameworks. So as I said, there is no direct way to communicate between your extension and your app, but you can still, with shared containers, share some data. So you can share files with a file system, or you can use user default or even Kitchen to share some secrets. To conclude, as I said, extension development is more demanding, and you are not a complete Cocoa engineer if you don't create extensions. Thank you.